This is a video for A-Level and IB Psychology discussing the use of Mann whitney u as an inferential statistical test. So the reasons why we would use Mann whitney is if we were conducting a test of difference, if we're using ordinal, interval or ratio data, but ordinal is an acceptable minimal uh, level, and if we had an independent group to design. The formula for Mann whitney u looks quite scary, quite intimidating. There are lots of parts to it, but if you look closely, you can see it's just repetition of itself. So the first thing that we notice is that we have to find uh, total ranked scores for Group A. We also have to do the same for Group B. We then also have to figure out how many people are in Group A and how many are in Group B and times those two numbers together. And then the next part is where we have to look at the number in Group A times that by itself minus one and then divide it by two. And then for the second part of Man whitney u we have to do that for group B. So in this um, short introductory video, we're gonna be testing the hypothesis. Um, there will be a difference in the aggression scores of two groups of male inmates at a high security unit relating to the intervention received. So we have two groups, as you can see, we have group A and their aggression scores, and we have group B and their aggression scores. So to test the difference, we're looking at the difference between them. We're also going to look at two completely separate groups, so group A and group B, uh, independent measures, and the data is at least ordinal. So the first thing that we need to do for calculating Man whitney is to rank the data for both groups as though they were one group. And this is, has been done for you already. Now I want to look carefully at the table because the ranking process is quite complex. So as you can see, we have two scores of one. Okay, so we have two scores of one. They would respectively receive the rank one and two. However, because they are the same score, they have to receive the same rank. So the difference between one and two is 1.5. So instead of getting ranked one and two, they get 1.5, which is the midpoint between the two. So that's rank one and rank two gone, which means our next number will take rank three. As there is only one score of two, that's fine. We then have to look at what would get um, our fourth rank, and we can see that would be three. However, we have three threes. So similarly, we have to give them equal ranks. So rank four, five, and six are where um, those three positions would be, but they have to have the same number. The middle number between four and six is five. So all the threes get a rank of five. We're now up to rank seven. There's only one four, so that gets rank seven. We then have to look at uh, fives. We've got two of those. So they would take ranks eight and nine, again, because there are two of them. They have to take the middle uh, position. So it's 8.5, and then we only have one six, so that would take rank 10. So we've got ranks one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. But we've divided up the ranks where there are two scores that are the same. The second part of Man Whitney U is to find the total rank of each group individually. So now we've ranked them as a whole group, we now need to look at the scores that group A got and the scores in the ranking that group B got. So 8.5 add 1.5 add 7 add 10 add 8.5. By my calculations, it's 35.5. And then 3 add 5 add 5 add 5 add 1.5. Again, by my calculations, is 19.5. And this is symbolized by sigma RA and sigma RB, which you can see here in the formula. That simply means the total of the ranks of B and total of the ranks of A. So the next couple of steps are quite straightforward. So we have to multiply, as you can see in the formula, NA by NB. Now we have five participants in each group. So five times five is 25. The next part, if we look at the formula, we have to add one to NA and times that by itself. So one add five times by five. So one add five is six times five is 30. And then the last little bit here, we have to divide that answer by two, and that gives us 15. So we've calculated this section here, 
we've calculated this section here, but you can see there's an addition sign, so we need to add the two together. So 25 add 15 is 40. We then need to subtract sigma RA, as you can see from this part of the formula, from what we've just calculated, and this would give our answer for UA. So sigma RA is 35.5, 40 take away 35.5 is 4.5, which gives us a score of 4.5. We then have to do exactly the same for UB, our group B, but we need to make sure that where it said NA, we replace that with NB. And the smaller of the two calculated scores becomes the U value, which we would look up in the statistical value table. So if we have a little look at this, so we're now working on UB, so NA times NB is still 25. Add 1 to NB, well we've got the same amount of people in the group, so 1 add 5 is 6, times by 5 is 30. We divide that answer by 2, which gives us 15. 25 add 15 is 40. And then the final bit, we subtract sigma um, of the rank, sigma ranked scores B from the result. And our sigma ranked score was 19.5. Um, so 40 take away 19.5 is 20.5, and this becomes UB. So in terms of looking up the data in the critical values table, the smaller of UA and UB becomes U. So we only look at one score in the statistical values table and we just take the smaller one of the two that we've calculated, so 4.5. So here we have a very uh, small snapshot of a critical value table and it's at 0 0.05. So we're looking at the probability of our results being due to chance at about 5%. And because we had a two-tailed hypothesis, we're obviously using a two-tailed test. So to be significant, our observed value must be equal to or less than our critical value. So how do we look this up? Well, we need to look at NA and we need to look at MB. Both of those um, had five participants. So the score that our observed value needs to be smaller than is two. Well, our value was 4.5. So what does that mean? Well, that means it was not significant. To be significant, our observed value needed to be equal or less than our critical value, which it wasn't. So because this is the case, we accept our null hypothesis because there was no effect. And this simply means, because we tested it at P.05, that there was more than a 5% probability that the result was due to chance. Because we've accepted the null hypothesis, we need to reject our alternative. Okay, because there was no effect and the alternative hypothesis state that would state that they would be. So in conclusion, there was no difference between the aggression scores of two groups of male inmates at a high security unit relating to the intervention they received. That was a short introductory video to Man Whitney U for A-Level and IB Psychology.